How's everybody? So take a good look. I have a good sense of self. I know what you're all thinking. This guy's short, like really short. Needs to lose a few, doesn't. Jewish, probably an accountant. And you say to yourself, we were promised that we were gonna see Long Island's best emerging talent rock the legendary governor's stage. Well, where is this guy emerging from? The grave? What's he gonna rock? A chair on the porch of a nursing home? Well, let me tell you something. I don't really care what you think. I'm here for me. This is my bucket list and you all paid $15 and two drinks to fill my bucket. And I am not a fucking accountant. I'm a fucking lawyer for the last 37 fucking years. I just filled part of my bucket list. I said fuck in front of an audience three times. So I know that people don't like lawyers. Everyone hates lawyers. You know, they're the only group left in America that you can make fun of all you want. There's no consequences, there's no ramifications. They're fair game. There's an old joke about lawyers, I didn't make it up. Did you hear about the busload of lawyers that drove over the cliff? It was a terrible tragedy, there were three empty seats. <laughs> now first of all, there's no way on earth you're gonna get 37 lawyers on a bus. They are not going to leave their BMWs and their Mercedes in the parking lot and get on a bus at any time, any place, or anywhere. But really, lawyers are the only one that you can make fun of about them dying. I mean, you can poke fun at other groups, gays, transgender, Mexican, but you can't talk about them dying because that would not be politically correct. Okay, so only lawyers are the ones who can die in a joke. <laughs> but nobody cares about the lawyers, or they, nor do they think about the families. What about the impact on the families? What about 37 widows left behind with only $10 million in life insurance proceeds? <laughs> what about these poor women who have to now figure out which dating site to go on within 60 days after their husband dies. And then they have to cancel their Ashley Madison memberships because what fun is it if you're single now? And what about the kids? The kids hurt and angry that they have to wait until they're 21 to collect their trust funds. Well, there is actually one other group that you can make fun of in today's world. Did you hear about the limousine carrying the Kardashians that went over the cliff? It was a terrible tragedy. Kanye wasn't in the car. <laughs> Unfortunately, neither were Miley Cyrus nor Justin Bieber. All right, well, you know, being a lawyer, it ages you ahead of your time. Things start to hurt, they get sore, and entire systems start to break down. I noticed at some point that I was peeing 15 times a day, waking up three times a night. So I made an appointment with a urologist. He explained to me that I had an enlarged prostate. Now, there are a lot of things I would like to enlarge in that vicinity, but the prostate was not my first choice. So he took a sonogram, and he's sitting there, and suddenly he's like, holy shit, I never saw one this big. It's like the size of a bowling ball. 
I turned white as a ghost. He saw my face, he felt bad, he tried to backtrack. He says, don't worry, it's not a big bowling ball. It, it's like a small bowling ball, like an eight pounder that the little kids use. Don't worry about it. I felt so much better. So then comes the moment that all men dread, the actual prostate exam itself. That's when he tells you to put your hands on the examining table, bend over, and you know what happens next. So I did it, and I decided that I was going to be stoic, that I was going to act like a man taking it up the ass. So then I see him putting on his gloves and the lube, and I realize for the first time, I've never looked at his hands. This man has hands like a left tackle. He's got fingers like knockwursts. I made a mental note that next time I chose a urologist, I would call ahead, I would speak to the re receptionist, and I would say, excuse me, could you tell me about the doctor? Would, would you call his hands small, <laughs> medium, or, oh shit, I better find another doctor. <laughs> so, I bend over, and the moment is coming, and suddenly, I have this irrational thought. All reason and logic escape me. And I just have this mental image of this knock worst finger going up my ass and getting stuck in the small hole of the bowling ball that is wedged up my ass. But luckily, I made it through it and his finger didn't get stuck. So when we were finished, he said, you know, some guys with enlarged prostates, you know, maybe sometimes uh, in the sexual area, they get a little off their game. He says, maybe we should talk about that. So I answered his questions. He told me to get dressed, go outside to the front desk and his receptionist would give me the prescriptions that I needed. So I went outside. Now, as you may know, in today's world, there are a lot of new laws about medical privacy. Basically, no one on earth can know about your medical condition. It's the law. Well, that law does not seem to apply at my doctor's office. There's a woman at the front desk named Ethel. I knew right away I was in trouble. No one in the last 70 years has been named Ethel. <laughs> and I went up to get my prescription. She sits behind the counter, you know, and she looks out on the waiting room, and the waiting room is packed. I don't know, a lot of people having penis problems that day. <laughs> so I went up to her, and she yells back to the doctor, Doctor, I see Mr. Goldberg needs Viagra. I'm like, I want to crawl in the hole. How many does he need? Well, the doctor is no better. From the back of the office, he yells, give him a year's supply, like 12. <laughs> so at this point, I'm just trying to salvage my dignity because I know everybody is looking at me. And I said to her, Ethel, I'm sure the doctor meant 12 a month. 12 a month! She says, oh no, your chart says, patient reports that he has sex approximately once a month. It's 12 for the year. So, I hear a couple in the corner whispering to each other. They say, oh, we do better than that. 
and they were 80 years old. So she gives me my prescriptions and now I have to do the walk of shame out of this waiting room filled with people. And I felt like someone in that movie with Sean Penn and Susan Sarandon. Dead penis walking. <laughs> Dead penis walking. So I try to make my way out with my eyes glued to the floor. But there was this one asshole sitting in the waiting room with this shit-eating grin. He's smiling at me. He's giving me thumbs up. So I said to him, fuck you. He said, okay, but you better ask her for 13 pills. So my time is up now. I've never gone this long without going to the men's room. You've been a great audience. Thanks so much.